Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to change the order of the build modifier so you can create a construction animation. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so what we've got here is we've got it like a super, super simple house, right? So I've just modeled out a house real quick. And what I want to do is I want to set this up where my walls get built into place and then my roof gets built into place. And so the way that we're going to do that is with the build modifier. And so remember, all you have to do is just go into your modifier settings on the right hand side and you can just add a build modifier. And so when you do that, now if I click play, the pieces of this building are going to get dropped into place, right? So we can use that in order to create an animation where the parts and pieces get built in. Now uh, we'll talk a little bit more about maybe adding some detail or something in a minute, but let's go ahead and go with this for right now. So one thing you might have noticed when we do that is it's just kind of like randomly dropping the pieces into place, right? So it drops like this first wall into place and then this wall. And then for some reason it drops the like final or the back corner wall in here. So it doesn't really do it in a way that's very ordered. It's more just kind of random. And it's random even if we haven't checked the randomized box. If you check the randomized box, you're just going to get a different set of things, right? So you can actually adjust which pieces go into place first using the 3D cursor location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode real quick. And what I wanna do is I wanna sort my elements. And so you can sort your elements by going into mesh and there's an option here for sort elements. And the one that's gonna give us the most control right now is the option for cursor distance. And so that's going to give us the ability to sort the order that these are put in place based on their distance from the 3D cursor. And so what I want to do is I want to do a shift right click and I want to place my cursor on this front corner right here. And then I want to do a mesh sort elements by cursor distance. I want to make sure that I have faces selected. I have not found that the other ones work very well. Um, the only one that really works for me is the faces. So again, like I said, not a super precise tool. It'll work for what we're trying to do though. But now, if I tab back into object mode and I click on play, notice how now the objects that it's going to put in place first are going to be the ones closest to that 3D cursor. And you can kind of play around with that cursor location. So let's say for example, we wanted to try doing it from the middle. We could find the edge center and put our 3D cursor there. And then you could go to mesh, sort elements by cursor distance again. So now, Notice how it's gonna place the ones that are closest to that cursor first. And so one thing we might wanna think about doing is we might wanna think about adding a modifier that adds a little bit more detail. So we might wanna add like a subdivision surface modifier, but I'm gonna do a simple subdivision. Okay, and so we added the subdivision surface modifier and we clicked on simple, but nothing is happening, right? These are coming in as the same pieces. Well, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that subdivision happens before your build modifier. Well, now, if I click on play, notice how there's a lot more pieces in here. So you've got a lot more interesting animation and you could definitely jump up the number of subdivisions if you wanted to do that. That would make there be even more pieces kind of flying into place. So again, this isn't maybe necessarily the ideal tool for doing in-depth construction animations, but it is something that can give you an interesting building animation inside a blender. So now let's say that we wanted to also animate this roof falling into place, right? So with the roof, we're gonna do the same thing. And note that I've built the roof by modeling one side and then mirroring it. That's gonna be important in a minute. But what I wanna do is I wanna set this up where as soon as this animation is complete, so it's actually at 100, but it's kind of animating in some roof pieces over here um, that we can't really see. So really we're gonna say that this is in place probably 81, 82. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna take my roof and I wanna add a build modifier to my roof. So I'm gonna add a build modifier right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to set the build to a start frame of 82. And what that means is that means that this is gonna start building into place at 82. And again, I wanna do the same thing that I did before where I want this to start with maybe the middle piece what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I may go into wireframe for a second. What I wanna do is I wanna find the midpoint over here and I want to do an A and I wanna do a mesh sort elements by cursor distance. Again, I will set this to faces. And so now 
if I go back and look at this, this is going to put those pieces in place based on the cursor distance. And so one thing you might have noticed though is it's putting those pieces into place and it's doing one side and then the other side. All right, and so the reason that it's doing that is because the order of the modifiers. So all I want to do to change that is I want to take that mirror modifier, I want to place it down below the build modifier. So now if I do that, notice how both sides of this are going to get built in at the same time, like this. And again, if we wanted more pieces in here, we could definitely add a subdivision surface modifier like we did before. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna place it up above everything. We're gonna make sure it's set on simple. We don't want the other way because it's gonna make our geometry look weird. And we can go ahead and we can bump those levels up. But now, if I click play, I've got this full house animation moving into place just like this. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I know it's not a super precise tool, um, but it's something that does allow you to quickly create those animations. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.